Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be talking about three very important calls that you could hear over the radio. We have Mayday calls, Pan Pan calls, and Securite, all of which could literally save a life. My name is Emily, we have Amanda behind the camera, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Before we get too far into this video, let's talk about channel 16. Channel 16 is the international worldwide distress frequency. So literally it can be heard all over the world on any VHF radio. You may hear Mayday calls, Pan Pan calls, Security calls, or some information from the Coast Guard over channel 16. The thing you need to be sure of is that you're not on channel 16 talking to your buddies, doing radio checks. This channel is not for that purpose at all, so don't be that guy. On busy weekends, you may hear something like, please be advised, channel 16 is not a hailing frequency. It is for emergency use only from the Coast Guard because the goal of channel 16 is to help people protect themselves and save lives. We're not trying to be on there having phone calls. I feel it's really important to mention that it is good to stay on channel 16 and listen to it to be aware of your surroundings. You may hear something that is informational for you that you know you need to avoid a certain area, or you may hear a mayday call and maybe the Coast Guard never heard it and you have information that could save someone's life. The first of three calls we're gonna talk about is Securite. I'm gonna switch places with Amanda and she's gonna give you all that good information. Securite calls are the kind of calls that you will most likely be hearing from the Coast Guard and commercial vessels. You will most likely be hearing information about navigational safety and security, hence the name Securite. An example when you'll hear a Securite call is maybe a cruise ship is leaving a port. The Securite call will be made to notify all the boaters in the area that there's a cruise ship, which probably has restricted maneuverability, maybe they're constrained by draft, so that call will be made to notify everybody around to, hey, there's a cruise ship leaving a small port, give them some room. Another example of a Securite call might be a submerged log. Maybe the Coast Guard will be notified of a submerged log in the middle of an inlet or a busy waterway, and they will announce that there's a submerged log in a certain area, and now you and the boarders around you now know to keep an eye out for this specific log. Another example for a Securite call might be transmitting some weather information. Maybe it's a commercial vessel far offshore and it's in the middle of some crazy weather and it wants to notify other vessels in the area of this weather. Or maybe the Coast Guard gets some information about this storm. Maybe it's a tropical storm forming a hurricane building and they need to notify the vessels in the area. A Securite call might sound something like Securite, Securite, Securite. All stations, all stations, all stations. This is United States Coast Guard Station Miami Beach. The 63rd Street Bridge is experiencing technical difficulties and will not open until further notice. This is United States Coast Guard Station Miami Beach out. Now that's what a call might sound like, giving you information that the bridge won't open, so if you're a boat that needs that bridge open, you now know that you're not getting under it, you'll have to take a different path. Now, sometimes on channel 16, you will hear a similar call that will send you over to channel 22 alpha as to not crowd channel 16. So they'll give a short little message and say, head over to 22 alpha for boaters in the area. You'll switch over to 22 alpha and then you will hear the full message. Channel 22 alpha is designed for important maritime information frequently used by the Coast Guard. Amanda just talked about switching from channel 16 to channel 22 alpha. So we're on 16 and we're gonna scroll up to 22 alpha. So I want to point out that you can see 22A, it is spelled 22A, but it is pronounced alpha. Just thought that information would be useful. The next call we are going to talk about is the little brother to the mayday call. It's the pan pan call. Now the term pan pan comes from the French word pan, which means breakdown. This call is specifically used when you are in an emergency situation, but it's not life threatening. So some examples of when a pan pan call would be used is if you have a bilge leak, but you're not taking on water fast enough that you can't handle. Maybe a crew member broke their arm and you're requesting medical attention, but like I said, it's not life-threatening, or maybe you have a mechanical failure and you're drifting, but once again, not life-threatening. A pan-pan call is the kind of call that you might be making yourself, you might hear a nearby vessel making, or you might hear one from the Coast Guard. So let's say you're in a real-world situation, you're anchored on the reef, and your engines won't start. It's not life-threatening, but you definitely need assistance, you can't get anywhere. You might want to make a pan-pan call. So in order to make a pan-pan call, 
You're gonna start out by saying pan pan, pan pan, pan pan. Then you're gonna say all stations, all stations, all stations. That's notifying everyone around you that you're acknowledging them. Those are the people that you want that are hearing this to listen to you. You're gonna identify yourself, your boat name, Gale Force, Gale Force, Gale Force. And then your identification number. So on those center console boats, it's gonna be those little stickers on the bow of your boat. FL1234. The next thing, which is probably the most important, is your location. So whether that's your coordinates, or you might say, I'm 180 degrees, one mile off Sombrero Key. You're gonna give that information. The last step is to tell them what's wrong. I have engine failure, I am requesting a tow. And this way, everybody knows in the area, maybe there's a nearby vessel that hears you and they're comfortable towing, maybe there's a charter boat and that captain has their towing endorsement. So that information is gonna be very good to give all of that so now let's practice it in real world. Pan, 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 pan. All stations, all stations, all stations. This is gale force, gale force, gale force. FL1234. 180 degrees, one mile off Sombrero Key. I have engine failure and I'm requesting a tow. So that is the best way to put it all together for nearby vessels to hear you. Now you might hear the Coast Guard make a pan, pan call on behalf of another vessel. It could sound something like pan, 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 pan. All stations, all stations, all stations. This is United States Coast Guard Station, Key West. This is a marine assistance request for a 32-foot center console, 180 degrees, one mile off of Sombrero Key, requesting a tow. If you would like to assist, please contact the Coast Guard on channel 16. Now that is kind of what the calls are gonna sound like, so if you're in the area and you hear that, maybe, like I said, you're a charter captain and you have your towing endorsement, or maybe there's a sea tow boat in the area that says, I'm gonna go get them, it's their job. That is going to sum up our pan pan call, and don't worry guys, if you feel overwhelmed, we are gonna be putting this written in the description box, because believe me, I feel overwhelmed just giving you the information. But now, we are gonna move on to the mayday call, which is probably the most important call. So if you don't remember anything from this video, remember this one, Emily is gonna to give you the information. Mayday is a distress call used for immediate request of assistance. I'm talking life-threatening, your boat is sinking, you're jumping ship, life maybe heart attacks. Like this is for serious calls guys. Do not mess around with mayday calls. False mayday calls are criminal offenses. You will get fined. So definitely don't do that. But mayday is derived from the French word, excuse my French as I say this, midday. I believe, which literally means help me. A few examples of a mayday call could be fires, could be capsized boat, medical emergencies, heart attacks, any situation where you need immediate assistance and there is life in danger. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is start on channel 16. I hope you're already on it because in this whole video, we've been telling you guys the importance of listening to it and being informed. So now let's say you need to use your mayday call and you're already on channel 16. Next, you're gonna say mayday three times. You're going to state your vessel name, followed by your boat ID number. The next thing you are going to do is state your position. So people know where you are, guys. That's really important. Followed by position, you will say what's wrong, how you need help, how many people you have on board, and any important information, such as for our case, I'd probably say something like, we have a red hole. Our boat is bright red, guys. We have a white T-top. We are a 32-foot center console. Maybe you're a deck boat and you have a blue bimini top. Give that information, especially for situations where you're adrift or you cannot be running your boat and people need to come find you. We are going to put this into practice, guys. I'm going to grab my radio. I'm not pushing any buttons, no worries. Like we talked about, that's a criminal offense, okay? There's a fire on board. A man and I are alone, just the two of oh, us. Oh no! What do we do? Here we go. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Gale Force, Gale Force, Gale Force, FL1234. Mayday, this is Gale Force. My position is 24 degrees, 37 minutes, 446 seconds north, 81 degrees, 6 minutes, 651 seconds west. There is a fire on board requesting immediate assistance to adults, no medical injuries, 32 foot center console, red hole, white T top, over. You will repeat that at intervals until you hear a response, you guys. Something I really wanna reiterate is the location needs to get heard. So once you get a response, I would highly recommend focusing on hearing the location repeated back 
properly because if they can't find you then that's pretty serious. A very real reality that unfortunately we do have to face is what if we're not heard? What if we never get a response? Our VHF radios are not designed to go for 40, 50 miles. They're more short range than that, you guys. So you, I highly recommend that you have another source to contact help, such as a sat phone and, not or, and an EPIRB. So if you're not getting a response, you will do your mayday call through a sat phone or whatever source you choose to use. And like I said, not or, activate your EPIRB.